What's up everyone, April here. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you my personal favorite work from home hack. Now, I've worked from home for about five years now, and I know that I'm not the only one who's had a spouse, significant other, kid, roommate, walk in in your office when you're in the middle of a meeting at the most inconvenient time. So I developed a solution that works pretty well to counteract against this for me, and I thought I'd share that with you all. It involves this on-air sign that I have outside of my office door, and it's leveraging Power Automate to look at my Outlook calendar and automatically turn that light on or off based off of if I'm in a meeting. That way, people know not to barge in. I tweeted about this a while back and I've had a lot of people ask me for the details of how to configure this. So I'm gonna walk you through all the steps involved to get this similar solution set up in your home office. I'll break it all down right after this. Now, the first thing that I have to do is figure out the tech that makes it happen. So I have this on-air sign, which I got from Amazon, and I'm going to put a link to that in the description of the video, so if you wanna buy the same one. But this could be a sign, it could be an LED light strip around your door, whatever mechanism you wanna use. The thing that I did since I have this sign, which is USB powered, and my husband did this amazing wire job along the door frame for me, is I bought a Casa Smart Plug. And again, this could be any type of smart plug that you'd like, whatever you prefer, as long as we can get access to that through either a connector in Power Automate or through a connector in something like IFTTT. So whatever mechanism you want for the lighting and then a smart plug like this Casa One, which I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Now it's time for the software logic piece of this process. So to show quickly how this is gonna be set up, we're going to be using Microsoft's Power Automate workflow tool to trigger a workflow to kick off when an event is about to start on my Microsoft Outlook calendar. Once that's kicked off, it's going to trigger an IFT automation or IFTTT, if this, then that, which is going to have a webhook trigger, which will then go and interact with the CASA smart plug and toggle that on. Then I'm going to check and see how long this meeting is on my calendar, and I'll pause my flow for the duration of this event. When the event ends, I'm going to call a separate IFTTT integration, which will then toggle my CASA light plug back off. So let's start with the Power Automate side of things, and then we'll show how the IFTTT integration comes into play. Power Automate is part of Microsoft 365. So with most of the business Microsoft 365 accounts, we get a free version of Power Automate included with that. So if we were to click on the waffle here, you should see Power Automate in the list of options. So let's open that up. The automations we do inside of Power Automate are called flows. So if we click on this My Flows tab on the left-hand side, we'll see an option in the top left to create a new flow. The type of flow we want for this instance is what's called an automated flow. So we can give this flow a name like On Air, and then we can search through hundreds of triggers. And all a trigger is is what kicks off your automation. So I'm gonna do a search here in the Check Your Flows trigger for Outlook. And one of the triggers that we'll notice here is when an upcoming event is starting soon. So now if we click that, we can start configuring our flow. So we can point it to one of the calendars that we have that we wanna trigger this off of, which is my default calendar here. And if we expand out advanced options, so it's very important to expand out because we want to be sure to define the look ahead time. So this flow is gonna get kicked off when an event is starting soon, but we need to specify how soon before an event we wanna kick it off. So the default as we see here is 15 minutes before an event, but we might not wanna turn on our on-air sign or light strip a whole 15 minutes ahead of time. We might only wanna do that say one minute before. So I might change that to one. Now, I already have the entire workflow for how this should function built out. So I'm actually gonna go back to my flows and I'm going to edit this set smart busy lights for event flow because that has everything built out to do this automation. So I have the same trigger, but the next thing that you'll notice is I'm doing an HTTP action. So when we click the plus in our flow, we have add an action as an option. So we can search through hundreds of different triggers that we have to be able to add in different actions to build up the logic of our flow. So if I search for HTTP, you'll see we have several different options here. The one I'm using is this basic HTTP action. Now you will notice that next to it, it does say premium. 
So that means that to use this particular action in our automation, it does require additional Power Automate licensing. So from the flow page here, if you scroll all the way down to the footer, you will see a pricing option and you can get an idea for how much a premium flow license will cost you. And this is licensed per user. So it's about $15 a month per user to do this automation in Power Automate. Now here is where we need to integrate with IFTTT. And this is all because we don't have native integration to CASA in Power Automate. Power Automate is really more geared to business automation than it is home automation, whereas IFTTT is more geared towards home automation. Now that's not to say that we can't natively integrate with CASA in Power Automate. One of the cool things about the Power Platform and Power Automate is it has a connector model and you can build what's called custom connectors. So that means we can take any service that has an API, build a wrapper around that API known as a connector and integrate with it. So technically I could go out if I have access to the CASA API and build a custom connector for that. I just didn't want to take the time to do that. And I know from other personal home automations I have set up in IFTTT that the integration is already built in there. So I'm just going to call that. But just know that building a custom connector is an option if you want to do everything in Power Automate. So what I need to do is post an HTTP request to an IFTTT webhook to be able to kick off the automation that will turn on my smart plug. So let's jump over to IFTTT. Now IFTTT is pretty similar to Power Automate, same concept. Instead of a flow, you have what's called an applet. So if I go to my applets, you'll see that I have a few created already that I'm using for my home automation. And one of those is called on air. So this particular applet, if we look at its settings, is being triggered by a web request. And when a web request is received, then I'm going to use the CASA connector, which is built into IFTTT to turn on my CASA on air site. Now there is a free tier in IFTTT that allows you to do a handful of personal automations, which is what I'm using. So that's an easy way to get started with this. Now, if you are starting from scratch, you would want to go to the create tab here on the upper right hand corner. And all you have to do, it's pretty simple, is choose your if this, which is your trigger. So you click add and you would do a search for web hook. So we want this web hooks option here and we want this receive a web request trigger. We need to give our web request an event name. So we'll use this in our flow to tell what event we're calling. And when you're filling this out, make sure that you only are using numbers, letters, or underscores and no other special characters. So it might say on underscore air. And you'll just create your trigger and then you'll figure out the then that. So this is your action. So all we have to do here is search for CASA or whatever smart plug you're using. And then we have several actions for CASA, one of them being turn on. So we'll select turn on and then we'll select the plug that we want to turn on here. And that's pretty much it. Now to call this webhook, we need to be able to get the URI that we want to post to. So let's see how to get that. To get this URI, the easiest way that I know is to simply go to maker.ifttt.com. That will take you to the webhook integrations and we can scroll down and select documentation here. So this will show you your unique key for your IFTTT maker instance. And then below we can see to make a post or get request, this is the URI that we need. So we're gonna call maker.ifttt.com forward slash trigger. And this is where the event name comes in. So we need to pass in the event name that we defined when we set up our applet. And then we just copy the rest of the URI. So I'll copy this here. I'll go back to my applets and I'll click on our on air applet. And let me remind myself if I go to the settings, and our trigger here of what I call this event. So I called it on underscore air. Now we can go back to Power Automate, expand out our HTTP action and paste in that URI here. So I'm going to replace the event with on underscore air. And that's really all that I need to do. Now I could leave it here and just have it automatically turn on when an event starts. But ideally, I want it to automatically turn off when that same event ends, so it's not just left on all the time. So that's what all this other stuff is doing below. So I'm using an action in Power Automate called Compose. 
and I'm going to use an expression here to get the difference between the end and the start date. Because what I'm trying to do is get the duration of a meaning. And don't worry, I will copy this formula and put that in the video description. And I'll even save this flow so that you can download it and just fill in the blanks. So once I have the date difference, I want to get the seconds and the minutes. So that's what these two composed actions are doing. Once I have that difference value, now I can go in and add an action called delay. So this is where I can tell my flow to delay for X number of minutes of the duration of the meeting. And finally, I just want to do one more HTTP request. And this time I'm going to call IFTTT again, but I'm going to call a different applet. So if we go back to my applet, you'll notice I had a separate one called off air. So this one, if we look at its settings, is using a webhook trigger as well, but its event name is called off air. It is calling the turn off action for CASA instead. So I can copy that same URI, paste it in there and change the on to off. And now that will toggle my smart light back off. So we can save this. And that's all that's really needed from the Power Automate side. This should be ready to go. Now the true test is if I add an event. So let's go into Outlook. I'll go to my calendar and we'll create a brand new event. So I'll call this on air check. I'm going to schedule it for a couple minutes from now and click save. So that meeting is on my calendar. So theoretically, my workflow should be kicked off here fairly soon. Great, it looks like it's working. I can see that 54 seconds ago, a flow is kicked off and it's running. So if I click into that, I can see what's going on behind the scenes. So I see that I did post that HTTP request successfully. So I'll be right back. I'm gonna go check to see if my light's on. And I'm back, the light is on just as I expected. And if we look at the flow, we can see that the delay is happening. There is a seven minute delay, so I made that a short meeting. So after seven minutes, the workflow should kick back off and then post back to IFTTT to shut that light back off. And this is truly an automation that I use every day and it's been a real lifesaver for me. Now I will mention I do also have a stream deck that I use which is leveraging IFTTT to program a button that I can click to toggle that light on and off as well. So if for any reason someone calls me and I have an unexpected meeting that isn't on my calendar and I need to quickly toggle that light on or off, I use my Stream Deck for that. So if you're wanting a way to do this more ad hoc, a Stream Deck or even one of the flick buttons that is out there could be good for those instances. I'll package this workflow up, document the process, and put this out on GitHub so that you can download it and start using it. I hope you found this video helpful. I'd love to hear what other ideas you have for home automation and how you've leveraged the Power Platform to help. Drop me a note in the comments and let me know. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other Power Automate automation videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.